Feldy, in this video, we're going to discuss some less commonly used TEM techniques. The ones I have selected are Lorentz microscopy and electron holography. You will find these two techniques handy if you study magnetic materials, especially if you focus on looking at the magnetic domains. To be honest, I've never used these techniques myself, so I'll do my best try to explain that to you in a very simple way. Let's look at the Lorentz microscopy first. Notice the sample sits here. The objective lens is supposed to be here. And down here, you see an extra lens called the Lorentz lens. So in the Lorentz microscope, the Lorentz lens replaces the objective lens. For magnetic materials, they have magnetic domains. Using the example on the left, Certain domains will have the magnetic moment pointing down. The other domain will have the magnetic moment pointing up. The local magnetic moment will bend electrons in different ways. Such local perturbation will be reflected in diffraction patterns as spots splitting. As the example shown on the right from the textbook, you can see the 200 spot splits into four. And this tells us there are four magnetic domains in the selected area for diffraction. If we use a super small objective aperture to select only one of them, then the corresponding magnetic domain will show up in the dark field image. This mode of imaging is called Foucault imaging. Nowadays, the Lorentz microscopy has been incorporated with STEM. The detector shown in B is called a quadrant detector because it has A, B, C, D quadrants. Because each magnetic domain in the material will deflect the electron in a different way, one of the quadrants will preferentially collect electrons from one type of domains. On the left of the schematic of the detector is a bright field TEM micrograph. You cannot tell too much about this magnetic material. However, in STEM, if you only select one of the quadrants, then specific magnetic domains will show up. This level of information is impossible to resolve using conventional electron microscopy. Another type of images you can acquire using the Lorentz microscopy is the Fresnel images. Fresnel should be our old friend now. We first learned Fresnel from Fresnel fringes. In the Fresnel imaging condition, if your image is in focus, you actually won't see too much because there's no contrast. But if you play with the defocus value, either over-focus or under-focus, the deflection of the incident electron beam is magnified by the local change of magnetic moments. Therefore, the dark and the bright lines will tell you where the domain walls are. To quickly wrap up the Lorentz microscopy, in Foucault images, the contrast comes from each domain. In Fresnel images, the contrast comes from domain walls. Moving on to the electron holography, the instrument is very similar to the Lorentz microscope. Again, the Lorentz lens replaces the objective lens here. There are some differences though. The first is the sample. You don't have the entire sample interacting with the beam. What this gives you is part of the electron beam is not interacted with the sample and it is called the reference beam. And the other part of the electron beam interacted with the sample and it is called the object beam. You also have the biprism to separate the reference beam and the object beam. Since the reference beam and the object beam have different faces, so it will form an interference pattern on your screen. Conventionally, electron holography has been used to study magnetic materials. Again, this example is taken from the Williams and Carter textbook. Let's focus on figure B. The magnetic lines are clearly visible in this material. More recently, electron holography has been used to resolve the structure of individual protein molecules. These examples are taken from Fink Research Group from Zurich. The first image here shows the raw data, and you can see the interference patterns around the molecule. The second image shows the shape of the molecule after reconstruction from the raw data, which agrees very well with the model of albumin. The same approach can be used to resolve the structures of other protein molecules. The authors explained the reconstruction algorithm in a very nice way. It is like throwing a pebble into the pond. By looking at the waves caused by the pebble, 
they can reconstruct the shape of the pebble. In this case, the waves caused by the pebble are the interference patterns from the reference beam and the object beam, and the pebble itself is the protein molecule. A side note, when I first saw electron holography, I was more expecting seeing something like this. I was slightly disappointed by only looking at the magnetic lines of force. With the advancement of TEM, the TEM holography may enable us to see something like what we are seeing now on Star Wars, but down to a nano or even atomic scale.